Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well on this Friday. Today we're going to take a look at the Berlin Command deck. It's a division that I don't play a lot, and for some reason I've never really fallen in love with it. And I can't tell you why that is, because I actually think it has a reasonable array of units. A little bit weak in anti-air perhaps, and a little bit weak in aircraft, but overall it's not bad. I think one of the problems I have with this deck is the Nighthawk. I love it in Wargame Red Dragon, it is such a good unit when used correctly. Here it always feels a little bit hit and miss, literally as with all of the laser guided bombers at the moment. So I'm not sure if that's what puts me off it a little bit. But let's have a look through today, because I do think that it has some really good units, especially for team games and 10v10s. So first thing I'm going to point out is the obvious French bias when it comes to the supply trucks. This is the TRM-2000. It has 8 health points, or hit points, or max damage, whatever you would like to call it, and a speed of 72 across ground. The M35, which is exactly the same price, is much slower across ground and only has 5 health points. The Bedford is the same speed, thankfully, but still only has 5 hit points. But just out of those two, I think it's crazy that they're the same price, because that's going to take an extra hit, potentially, for some artillery. Um, it is what it is, though. But there you go, French bias, straight away. I then opted to take the UH-1 supply. The reason I took the UH-1 supply was because it's got 600, and you get 10 of them, which means 6,000 overall. So overall, you're getting more supply. Now, in fairness, it works out a lot cheaper, obviously, to bring in... 10 of these and get 5,000 so there is certainly nothing wrong with taking the M35 instead of the UH-1. The reason I'm taking that is purely on the basis that I want the extra supply and if I'm in a 10v10 game I don't really care that it costs 40. Most of the time I've got enough points to cover it. You have four one point activation slots here so you could go for a supply point as well if you wanted. But in terms of the command, I have gone for the French one because it is slightly faster than the Rover down here. Slightly faster. And it has better autonomy. So it can go 14 kilometers instead of 13. So again, just slightly better overall. Same price. You get three of each of them. French bias. Now, please understand that when I joke about French bias and say stuff like that, I am semi-joking. Okay, there is obviously <laughs> some slight French bias to these units, but I am also joking on. Right, infantry. There's a lot to choose from in this deck, but there's also a lot I probably wouldn't touch with a barge pole. At the moment, I'm really not into the military police anymore. In the last patch, like, you know, the last big patch, when it was the tank meta, I was really into the military police. I really enjoyed the fact that they massively reduced cohesion. But, or the cohesion loss, I should say. But as it stands, I'm just not feeling them needed in this current meta. I don't know why there might be another change to that soon. They only get the machine guns here. They don't get any grenade launchers. And I think overall, the Wombat is a better option. It covers vehicles and infantry. So I'm leaning towards that at the moment. But yes, lots to choose from here. But let's go through what I've actually bothered to choose. So the Milan 2 is our long range weapon. You can bring it in in a VAB Milan, but the VAB is bad stealth so it's just going to get popped pretty quickly so i opted to just bring them in in the little jeep i think that's fine i've gone for the wombat because the recallers rifles are still pretty good medium range they're good for sticking in buildings they're good for sticking in forests potentially they do good penetration they do a decent he damage so they're in there then we've got the berlin light rifles these again are a pretty good squad you've got 10-man squad, decent infantry weapons in the form of, you know, 8M16s, 2M249s. You've also got the M67 recallless rifle, which you would usually get with the military police, but you can have that with the Berlin Light rifles here. I think that's a good squad, and I've actually taken two of those. I would consider removing one of those and taking something else. 
if I truly felt that the 12.7 millimeter machine gun was dishing out the damage, I'd consider swapping that out with one of those or the wombat. But as it stands, I'm taking those for the moment. Okay. Close range stuff. You're limited to Engineer's Flash, Sapu's Flam, and Terrier's Pioneers. The Terrier's obviously fine, but Satchel Charges, as I keep discussing at the moment, because of the reduction in damage, and the fact that people know to run away from these things, they're just not as scary as they once were. And they become very situational to you catching someone off guard. So I'd rather have something slightly longer range like the Flash or the Flamethrower. Because I know that it's got range. This is just too close at the moment. But I'm sure there's going to be some changes for that sooner or later. Okay, then in terms of your standard infantry. There's quite a bit of choice here. You've got the Engineer's Dragon. 10-man squad, not terrible. The Berlin Light Rifles Law. Again, 10-man squad, not terrible. 45 points. It is what it is. You got the RAF rifles. Unfortunately, they are reservist trait, so they take a lot more suppression. Not too fond of that. 12-man squad, though, which is tempting for the zombie meta. So we're looking at 10-man squads, really, or something around that level. The Grenadiers, again, a decent unit. 10-man squad, 50 points. LRAC's not bad, good range on it. They're a good squad, but what I actually ended up doing was mostly taking the British rifles. Is there a bit of British bias in my mind there? Possibly. But I think the main reason I went for that was the Law 80. You don't have a sort of heavy anti-tank squad in this deck. You don't have one that has two launchers. Whereas you do in some other decks. I think here you're relying on something like the rifles to do your damage to vehicles and tanks in forests and towns. And the fact that their penetration is 20, it it is just that good compared to everything else. You just don't have access to anything else like that in the deck. So I've opted to go for those and I've taken all three stacks of them. Because they're still decent squads. The only thing is they are two men short, whereas the Grenadiers... Oops, I did take a squad of Grenadiers at the end there. The Grenadiers, which I will actually take in a fab, Because you can't take the rifles in anything with a machine gun. But these guys, they're a 10-man squad. The Elrak isn't as good. But the other weapons are similar. It's They're a decent squad, and I like the fact you can bring them in the VAB. Now... All of these transport vehicles and machine guns, if you use them sensibly, you can use them to provide a lot of fire support. You know, it's it's a proper machine gun. In lieu of using these guys, it's still that type of machine gun. And they do do a reasonable amount of suppression and stuff like that. They're good fire support, if nothing else. And if you position them carefully as you assault a town, you can fire into the town and the buildings without exposing them to fire so they do have their moments where they're very good so being able to bring at least one set of squads in with them is quite nice what would you take here because i think there's a lot of choice but i just i can't convince myself that even though they're cheaper and i think maybe in 1v1s where you're more worried about the price of things to some extent but your bigger team games and your 10v10s i worry less about the price would you take any of these, the light rifles and things like that? Do you think they're worth it, considering they have the reservist trait? Do you like the dragons? It's only a dragon one, that's what puts me off it. The light rifles lore, again, not a bad squad, just not too exciting. With the lore, I think, you know, the grenadiers and the rifles are better. Obviously room to take a command here as well, if you were so inclined. But that's what I went with. I'm curious, do, do other people take this sort of build or do they go with something else completely? I assume everyone's taking the Berlin Light Rifles, but do you take both squads? Because that was a debate in my mind as to whether I took both cards, sorry, or just one card. Let me know in the comments. Genuinely curious, because as I say, I don't really play this deck. And for some reason, I've never truly gotten on with it. And I, I don't honestly know why. Uh, artillery, I felt the... <sighs> It's all mortars, really, isn't it? 
And really, you're going to take the 120mm mortar because it's the best one. Um, and then in terms of the actual artillery, I went with the standard towed cannons. The vehicles, they're fine. They are fine. But they're expensive. And I've had plenty of luck. If I keep these spread out, it stops them all getting killed together. Try and keep them moving. I've had reasonable success recently with the towed ones. And just, as I say, keeping them spread out. So I'm happy enough with that tanks tanks again there's a lot of choice here but there's also just stuff that i'm definitely going to take i'm definitely going to take the m1 ip and i'm going to rank it up i'm definitely going to take the abrams command because it's better than the chieftain i'm taking the chieftain and i'm going to rank it up because it's still a really good tank and i want to rank it up because i don't get many tanks here so ranking that up is beneficial in my mind AMX-30, I'm taking because I really want to see how good the autocannon is now. With its new 50%, 58% accuracy, sorry. Just genuinely curious. I haven't ranked it up because I don't think there's much point in ranking it up. It's my cheap tank option. And then I've gone for the Humvee with a tow launcher. So you've got plenty of launcher options here. You've got the ITV, but stealth is mediocre, so eh, not worth it. Milan, again, that's pretty good. It's very close to the Toe 2, but it's not as good as the Toe 2. But it's almost half the price. There's a bit of a balancing up to do there, but I decided that, again, these big team games and 10v10s, I can afford the Humvee. So, there are definitely other situations where I think taking the p4 milan would be better small team games where you're worried about your points that you're spending more and 1v1s i think perhaps then it becomes a better option because you're not having to fork out as much for a toe two when a milan two if it hits is gonna do similar kinds of damage yeah it seems reasonable you've got a lot of other vehicles as well like you've got the raden which I think prior to the nerf to autocannons wasn't bad, but not fantastic. AMX 13 slash 90, I think as a little bit of harassment, as one of those harassment vehicles, I think it's really good. But it's 60 points, and for 90 points I can have the AMX 30, so I'd rather take that in this deck. But if you wanted something else and you know weren't taking the tow, for example, perhaps that's a good choice. You've also got the CEV down here, which I don't think is a bad unit. I think people have a lot of success with it. But I always feel with these units, the CEVs and things like that, they just don't hit quite as hard as they did in Wargame Red Dragon. And I think that puts me off. I think it colours my view of them a bit. Okay, Recon. Recon, you don't get any ground surveillance radar, so just put a bud in that right there. I've opted to go for the Scouts because I can also get the Humvee, which again is that whole thing where that means I get 18 Scouts. Or 18 Recon units, effectively. So I ended up going for that. The ACAV went through a period where it was very, very good. Not quite as much enjoying that anymore. So I think sticking with the Humvee Recon is a better idea. Let me take these guys. Because... Again, numbers more than anything else. I think they have a good weapon set as well. They've got the L-Rack, so they can kill vehicles. One of the other units I was looking at here was the PSSEB. I don't think they're a bad unit because they get the AT4 and satchel charges, so they can do a bit of everything. They're also technically special forces, but you only get four of them, and that's kind of what put me off. But I don't think they're a bad squad. But realistically, most of the time I'm not going to want to use these guys for fighting i want to use them for scouting so i'm always a bit dubious the only ones that i really bring in that i'm happy to fight i like the jaeger alfkel because they're such a big squad they can take some damage then other than that my choice was really deciding between the alouette which i do like taking a recon chopper these days just for scouting certain areas. However, the Sonderwagon. 
Sonderwagen is very, very tempting. And I decided to try it out because it has very good optics. Most of the vehicles here only have good optics, obviously other than the VAT, but its stealth is mediocre. But the Sonderwagen has good stealth and very good optics. That's the same as like the stealth as the Fox, but it has very good optics. Now it doesn't have a weapon on it, but I'm not using this for its weapon. It's basically behaving the same as the infantry in terms of its range. Its stealth isn't as good, but I don't think that's bad. So I'm going to give it a try and see what it's like. I might change that out for the chopper. We'll see. But that's what I went with. But there's, you know, the snipers, if you like the snipers here, I genuinely think you could build this many different ways. But I leave that to you. But my choice in the end was to go with that. Anti-air. Okay, so this is a bit of a funny part of this deck. There isn't any really good anti-air. You're kind of limited to man pads and the pivads. The pivads aren't horrendous. But they're also not amazing. The Mistral is obviously the best man pad available to you. Next, technically, because it also does 5 damage... In some ways would be the stinger, but the problem is it doesn't fire very fast. And then you've got the Javelin LML, which fires faster. And although it only does four damage, if you're wanting to scare off choppers, the faster fire rate is maybe better. I was really torn between these two. Really torn. And I'm the stinger is such a good unit. But the Javelin does fire faster and is technically slightly more accurate. But it has less range. It's really difficult choosing between those two. I'd say there's good reason to take either. I'm not sure about this 20mm here. This vehicle... Eh, again, I'm not overly fussed by it. I think I'd rather take two sets of man pads and the pivads personally. Again, curious, would anyone take anything different here? Would you take the Stinger over the Javelin LML? I really did have a long debate with myself about that. But I ended up sticking with the Javelin. Just for its increased fire rate. Okay. Helicopters. You literally have no real choice here. You have two cards. And you have two slots. And you can either take those two cards or you can't. I took them because I think there's good benefit to both of these. Rockets are very good at killing infantry. The hell arms are very good against vehicles. If you use them very carefully, they will survive. You've just got to use them more defensively, in my mind, than aggressively. I think the days of the gazelle rush, or gazelle push, whatever, whatever t time in the game you used it, I think they're gone. So, defensively, I think they're still very useful, though. Air tab, again, you don't have a lot of choice here. And I think this this was probably the most difficult part of the deck in the sense of it makes you wonder whether you take stuff here or fill out the rest of the deck somewhere. Harrier is your only anti-air jet. So you end up sticking it in because you kind of need an anti-air jet. The Harrier Rocket is pretty decent at killing infantry, stunning vehicles. It's not terrible. I've had good success with that against tanks even and stunning them down and stuff. So I opted to take that. The Cluster only has two bombs. You've got to be deadly accurate with it. Maybe you will be, but I felt that was risky. This again only has two bombs. And the problem is these are very slow jets. They're mostly going to be a suicide mission. That's the problem, so I just thought, no, it's not worth it. I ended up taking both Nighthawks on the basis that maybe they're running a bit better now. I'm sure the Laser Guidance stuff has improved in the recent patches. So I'd like to give those a go again. We take the Seed because it helps you to be able to operate this lot. I guess. I mean, the Nighthawks can get away with a lot more. But uh, the Harriers in that won't, so Seed is in there, because I feel like you need it. And then I took one Mirage HE Bomber, 
It is literally a carpet bomber. Again, the seed will help keep it alive potentially, but this thing should be very, very good at hitting vehicles, potentially hitting tanks, and clearing tree lines and towns because of the sheer amount of bombs it's got. It is pricey though. Losing this would be sad. But on the bright side, it's got 40% ECM. So, and it's very fast. So it's going to get out of dodge of most man pads pretty quickly. But yeah, it's uh, it'll be interesting to see how that performs. I feel like it'll do a lot of damage. But I'm just worried it gets killed immediately and then I've lost 320 points worth of jet. But there's the deck. Again, I'd be really curious what you guys do with infantry. Um, and whether you take something similar to this or you would drop some of this and take something else. I find it very difficult to make myself take the police now, as I say. And the machine guns, uh, I, I'm still having very mixed feelings about those at the moment. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Because again, I'm genuinely curious how people build this. But I think that's a good... You've got a good set of units here. You've got good infantry. Your artillery is so-so. It's fine. Tanks. Tanks are pretty decent. At least at the top end here. You've not got a lot of them. But if you're careful with them, they're going to be pretty good. Recon, you don't have anything outstanding. But you've got a reasonable mix. Anti-air is probably one of the weakest areas. Anti-air and air are the weakest areas probably. Helos, well... I mean, they're similar to other similar decks in the nato side to be fair unless you start talking about the americans with the apaches you're pretty much limited to lynxes and gazelles anyway so that's not a big difference it's really the anti-air and the air where i feel like it struggles because of the lack of a proper air superiority fighter but again let me know in the comments curious what everyone thinks thanks all for watching have a great weekend and i'll see you all soon